Hi, I'm Nichelle Aiden at the Capitol with Senator Vickers to talk about Senate Bill 121 about medical cannabis amendments. Can you tell us about your bill? Sure. So with the passage of the Medical Cannabis Act uh, a year ago, December, uh, there was been some updates. We had to do some updates during the summer, and this is kind of a further updates as we've gone through the process of implement implementing the program, getting it ready to go by March 1st. We've had some feedback from some of the agencies, Department of Health, Department of Ag, uh, some of the patients' coalitions, and Liber Libertas and others that have been participating in that, Utah Medical Association, law enforcement, making some refinements. So this bill is kind of a continuing process in how we can get the, pro the program up and running and do it more efficiently and better. So there's a few things that have been involved in this. We've had, we've really been in process of uh, negotiations, not really, I shouldn't say negotiations, deliberations over the over the summer. Uh, there's been a number of legislators that helped me, Representative Brad Daw, who's the House sponsor, Representative Jen Daly Provost from the Minority Party in the House, uh, Senator Luz Escamilla, and Senator Derek Kitchen, and even Senator Gene Davis from the on the Senate side have been working with me as we've gone through and deliberated some of the, the changes. Some of the things are with with agriculture, uh, refining a couple of processes there. Uh, there's some of the, in order to get the program up and running, we had to, some of the growers did a temporary site and then they invested quite a bit of money and then they have a long-term solution at another location. We're just clarifying in the law that if they want to, they can still can maintain both sites so they don't have to go through the expense of tearing out all that infrastructure they put in the first one and moving over. Uh, we've considered some things with patients, so how do we, one of the challenges we've had is getting enough physicians on board. Uh, for example, physicians are reluctant to, by nature, to go into something that they don't know a lot about, and this is certainly a new program, and, and some are reluctant to do that. So we're trying to find a way, a balance of how do, how do we allow for a certain number of cap on the uh, patients with a physician, but the same token, not getting in a situation for where just a few physicians are doing all the recommendations. So we're increasing the caps on a primary care physician from 175 to 275, on an approved specialist from 300 to 600. Um, going through, you know, those are... The, those are the types of things we've been considering, and it's a fairly long list of things, but those are some of the important things that we've been looking at. Great. And I heard it passed out of committee yesterday? It did. It passed out of Health and Human Services yesterday unanimously. We've had good support. Uh, obviously, there's still people that, you know, factions on both sides that have wanted us to go farther or some that don't want to go anywhere at all. Mm -hmm. And so that's always kind of a... I've used this term, tiptoeing through a minefield, trying to find, <laughs> navigate through and, and try to be uh, cognitive of the needs of the patients, but at the same token, needs of the, of the physicians and, and the agencies, the growers, the cultivators, the processors, all those types of things. We've looked at, you know, packaging, we've looked at dosing guidelines, just an array of things, but all in the effort of getting the program up and running, getting medication to patients by March 1st. Wow, perfect. For more information or to contact your legislator, just click on the link in the description below.